मिली <laughs> फिले <laughs> 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 Good morning, everyone. I hope I am audible to all. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Yes, ma'am. A very good morning to one and all present here. Pharmacies are the trusted source of knowledge, advice, and help. The way we cannot imagine patients without doctors, in the same way, medicines cannot be imagined without pharmacists. A very happy World Pharmacies Day to all the distinguished pharmacists and to all the budding pharmacists, and of course, to all of you. I am Miss Arunhati Madhi, Assistant Professor in Pharmaceutical Chemistry at NEF College of Pharmacy, Guwahati, and I have the privilege. For being your host today for this international webinar. Today, uh, I request everyone to please mute. I request everyone to please mute their mics. I request everyone to please mute their mics. Otherwise, uh, I will mute. Today, on the auspicious occasion of World Pharmacies Day, 
we NEF College of Pharmacy, Guwahati, and NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Nogao, have come up jointly for the first time to organize an international webinar with the theme, Transforming Global Health. On behalf of both the institutions, I wholeheartedly welcome all of you. Before we get started, I would like to introduce all of you briefly about the NEF Trust and the groups of colleges run by it. So NEF, National Education Foundation, since it, its inception in the year 1993, mm -hmm. has actively engaged in promotion of higher education in the entire Northeast India. NEF has been looking ahead for expansion, extension, and dissemination of education with more and more courses of modern studies. In its effort to encourage and inspire the young generation to opt courses of human and professional interests, the foundation has maintained constant touch with the modern trends in the field of education exploration, and thus it has maintained its pace and progress unabated in realizing its aim and objectives. It now stands as one of the premier organization of the Northeastern region of the country by virtue of its devotion and service to the society as a whole. The institutions which are group of institutions which are run by the NEF Foundation Trust are at present are NEF Law College Guwahati, NEF College Guwahati, NEF College of Pharmacy Guwahati, NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research Guwahati, uh, sorry, Nogao. Then, Ikra Academy High School, Nogao. Now, let me speak and brief about the importance of today's date, 25th September, as observed as the World Pharmacist Day every year. Every year, a distinct theme is used for the day, with this year the theme being Transforming Global Health. The purpose of this day is to encourage the activities and advocate the role of pharmacists in improving health in every corner of the world. This year, amid the corona pandemic, we are celebrating this event to express the solidarity to the important part of the healthcare team, the pharmacist. During this pandemic, apart from the doctors, nurses, and other healthcare workers, the pharmacists all over the world have worked day and night offering their selfless service towards the mankind. We express our deep gratitude and acknowledgement to each and every pharmacist all over the world. So in today's event, we will witness three outstanding lecture sessions from three dynamic and influential leaders of their respective field who are our important resource person for today's event. So I welcome all of you once again. Now, without any delay, I request our honorable and respected Dr. Jakir Hussein, sir, director, NEF Group of Colleges, to please officially inaugurate today's webinar with his majestic words. Sir? Good morning. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Namaskar. Respected guest of today's international webinar, uh, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma. Director, Regional Department of Bioengineering, Monterey Institute of Technology, Mexico. Dr. P. Ramalingam, Professor and Director, Raghavendra Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Andhra Pradesh. Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, Unicorn Academy, Australia. Principal of NEF, Law Col NEF College of Pharmacy, Dr. Raja Chakraborty. Principal of NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Nogao, Dr. Devaprutin Dasgupta, distinguished participants, faculty members of different institutions, and my dear students. <clears throat> we all know World Pharmacies Day is celebrated on 25th September every year to promote awareness about the importance and role of a pharmacist. On this day, the main aim is to showcase the pharmacist and their positive effect on health. The theme of World Pharmacist Day 2020 is transforming global health. Pharmacist transforming global health 
is the focus of World Pharmacies Day 2020. As frontline healthcare professional, pharmacists are facing an unprecedented workload during COVID-19 pandemic in pharmacies, hospitals, and other health establishments. I offer my sincere gratitude and thanks to all the courageous pharmacists on the occasion of World Pharmacies Day. I offer my deep sense of gratitude to mm -hmm. Dr. Asudur Sharma, Dr. Raman Lingam, and Dr. Amitabh Ghosh for being with us in this virtual setting and hope their cooperation in future. I also offer my sincere thanks to the organizers for taking the pain of organizing this program today on this occasion. I sincerely believe uh, that the deliberation made, uh, will be delivered by the Dr. Ashutosh Sharma and Dr. P. Ramalingam, mm -hmm. and as well as Dr. Amitabh Ghosh will be helpful to our students community a lot. They will be enlightened with the new avenues and new uh, innovations in the pharmaceutical industry. With this word, I conclude my lecture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Wish you all the best. Happy Pharmacy Day. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. Thank you, sir. Now, moving on. Now, I would like to request Dr. Kebapratim Das Gupta, sir, Principal, NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Nogao, to share his ideology on the occasion of World Pharmacist Day among our participants. Kebapratim, sir. Uh, uh, thank you. Am I audible, Arunditi? Am I audible? Hello. Am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. You are audible. Ah. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning. Good morning, uh, respected Dr. Jafar Hussain, Chairman, NEF Trust and Director of NEF Group of Institution. Uh, Ms. Farana Ahmed, Assistant Director, NEF uh, Group of Institution. Uh, Mr. Nurul Haq, uh, Dean Administration. Sorry for the disturbance. Uh, Dr. Raja Chakraborty, NEF College of Pharmacy. Uh, I welcome uh, the three distinguished speakers from different parts of the world. In this auspicious day, inconvenience and network issues is there. Today in this uh, auspicious day, I would like to mention the name of Dr. Mahadev Lal Shroff, the father of Indian pharmacy, whose contribution is a, really a big achievement. And due to his uh, dedication, well, we can uh, see us where we are today. Today, uh, in this year, Particularly, this 2020 uh, celebration of World Farmers Day is very significant in respect of the situation that we are facing today. The significant situation of this pandemic COVID, we can uh, see the contribution of the pharmacists. And I really uh, salute to their contributions. World Pharmacists Day is a day to be uh, integrated throughout the world, all the pharmacists, and to take the uh, pledge of, uh, to serve this community with our full dedication. In today's seminar, we are very much uh, uh, 
lucky to have the three speakers from the three different parts of the world and i hope that their dedication and their uh, objectives of this uh, their session will be very much useful to all of us and we will carry something from them in today's session with this i conclude today's uh, my speech thank you all thank you sir arunditi you can continue yes okay thank you sir thank you sir for your words next i would request dr raja chakraborty sir principal nef college of pharmacy guwahati to kindly share his ideas and thoughts on global health in context with today's webinar and inspire our young pharmacists with his valuable words Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I just want to say a wonderful good morning to all. Uh, our beloved and our source of inspiration, inspiration, Dr. Zakir Hussain, the director and a group of colleges, principal of uh, any of college of pharmaceutical education and research, Nagaon. Dr. Devakrishnan Dasgupta, our today's resource person, uh, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma, Director, Regional Department of Bioengineering, Manchester Institute of Technology, Mexico, Dr. P. Ramalingam, Professor and Director, R&D Division, Raipur, Andhra Pradesh, and Dr. Amitabh Ghosh, CEO and Founder, Unicorn Academy, yes, Australia. Our uh, All our faculty members, dear participants, and organizing committee members, I wish all of you a uh, happy Father's Day, two thousand twenty twenty. We are uh, celebrating uh, this day with the theme "Transforming Global Health," and definitely our uh, speakers, uh, excellent speakers, excellent resource persons, uh, will address all the participants. Uh, uh, will enlighten them uh, with their expertise and uh, experience. I just uh, want to offer this uh, my gratitude to all the pharmacists all over the world who are helplessly uh, working in this pandemic situation without caring their own, <clears throat> and uh, also all the pharmacists who are working dedicatedly. Have to make this uh, profession a respectful one and maintain the respect of this profession with this society. Mm -hmm. In this World Pharmacies Day, definitely we will be uh, celebrating in different ways. But this is the first time we are celebrating uh, the World Pharmacies Day in a uh, virtual way. So we have a lot of plans for uh, this in coming time, definitely. But in this regard. we are very much fortunate to have all the renowned speakers with us and uh, definitely they will enlighten us in this regard to all our participants without wasting much time let's come uh, to the actual session of our excellent speakers who will be uh, coming up in uh, time thank you very much to all thank you so much yes sir thank you so much sir for your valuable words now remembering the lines of mahatma gandhi ji who says it is health that is real and not the pieces of gold and silver now it's time to hear from a eminent resource person of today's international webinar before we dive deep into their words and enrich our knowledge bank i would request mr sorachuti dekka sir assistant professor nef college of pharmacy guwahati to please introduce dr asutosh sharma director of regional department of bioengineering monterey institute of technology quartero city campus mexico dekka sir please thank you arunrathi ma'am thank you arunrathi ma'am so good morning everyone on behalf of nef college of uh, pharmacy and nef college of pharmacy nagaon i welcome mm -hmm. all of you for this international webinar 
on World Pharmacist Day. Along with that, I also uh, I am also <coughs> inviting all the dignitaries, all resource persons. So first of all, I have got the opportunity to introduce one of the most eminent personalities uh, mm -hmm. from the field of biotechnology, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma sir. So let me introduce him to all of our virtual participants who are present with us in this webinar today. Dr. Ashutosh Sharma had completed his BS and MS in biotechnology from the Jiwaji University, Gwalior. Later, he did a PhD in Mexico on a bilateral project between Morelos State University, Mexico, and Arkansas State University, USA. After the completion of his PhD, he started a postdoctoral fellowship at the National Autonomous University of Mexico, UNAM, which is a world-ranking university coming under the top 100. And later, he moved to join Monterey Institute of Technology, which is also a world-ranking university with a rank of 155 in 2012 as an assistant professor. Previous to his PhD, he has worked at several prestigious international research institutions in India, such as IM Tech, NDRI, CCMB, and DWR. Within four years of trajectory, he, has, he was directly promoted to full professor category, being the youngest in the Querétaro campus. Since the beginning of his career, he holds academic leadership positions. During 2013 to 2017, he worked as biotechnology program director and later was invited to hold the position of the director of regional department of bioengineering. Currently, Dr. Asuto Sarma has led academy and research in the field of bioengineering, including biotechnology, food sciences, and agronomy bachelor and PG programs. He is a member of prestigious National Research and Council, currently as level one, two of four. He also participates as a member, reviewer of editorial boards of more than 20 international scientific JCR index journals. He has been invited in more than 37 national and international conferences as speaker and keynote speaker. His scientific contribution includes more than 75 original research articles, books, chapters, books, and patents. He is also the founder and director of New Center of Bioengineering at ITESM Querétaro campus, mm -hmm. where he has established state-of-art facility research center and consolidated a highly productive scientific group. He has received various prestigious scholarship and recognitions throughout of his career. Dr. Ashutosh Sharma sir has participated in numerous academic activities and international scientific associations and have been consultant for a number of government and private sector scientific mm -hmm. projects. Mm -hmm. So today we are, he is with us as a resource person. So I welcome Dr. Ashutosh Sharma sir on this virtual dive and mm -hmm. to share some of his experiences and knowledge on this graceful day of World Pharmacist Day. Over to you, Dr. Ashutosh Sharma, sir. Thank you very much, Dr. Bega. Very good morning to everyone. Uh, would you allow me to share my presentation, please? Yes, sir. Can I be, can I be heard? Yes, sir. You are audible. Just give us a few minutes, sir. Sure. Sir, you can share your screen. Kindly click on the share option on your desk. Zoom. Yes, it's still, um, I can't share. It's saying that host disabled participant is in sharing. Just a minute, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir, you are a co host, sir. This will stop the screen sharing. Sir, you are. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir, you are given now, now I can, now I can. Thank you. I can. Here you go. Yes, sir. It is uh, visible. Sir, you. Yes, sir. Screen is coming full. Sir. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So, well, again, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Deka, for your kind introduction. I'm, I'm very. Uh, honored to be here. Uh, well, again, good morning, good evening, good night, 
as the case may be, because here in Mexico, it's 12.30 a.m. Uh, and I hope that uh, uh, most of the people, they are connected from different parts of the world, right? So, and uh, I would like also thank to the organizing committee for organizing this uh, mm -hmm. pleasant event in this special occasion of Pharmacist Day. Uh, my gratitude to, to Dr. Jakir Hussain, mm -hmm. director of NEF Group of Institution, uh, Mrs. Farhan Ahmed, assistant director of NEF Group of Institution. Also, I'm very thankful for Dr. Raja Chakravarti, principal of NEF College of Pharmacy, and Dr. Deva Puritam Das Gupta, principal of NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research. Thank you very much for having me here. And I hope you all are safe and healthy. Well, I'm going to discuss about the process of drug development from plants. And I'm, I'm very sure that everybody here um, have some interest in the pharmaceutical sciences. So medicinal plant uh, lies in, in, in most of these area of pharmaceutical uh, research. And uh, basically this, this talk is about the, the recent panorama about the medicinal uh, research focused on medicinal plants. And India, Mexico, China, and many other countries who has a very rich culture of medicinal plants. So we know very well the importance of this important natural resource. Uh, how do medicinal plants help us, first of all? Uh, well, plants have been utilized as medicine for thousands of years. Uh, these medicine initially took the form of crude drugs such as tincture, teas, powders, and other herbal formulation. Uh, the specific plants to be used in the method of application for particular ailments were passed down through oral history. Eventually, information regarding medicinal plants was recorded in herbals. In most, uh, in more recent e history, the use of plants as medicine has involved the isolation of active compounds, purifications, characterization, uh, such as the case of morphine in the 19th century, uh, from the opium was extracted. Uh, it has been estimated that there are approximately more than 400,000 uh, medicinal plant species of angiosperm at least, but for most of these, only very limited information or knowledge is available. Uh, three approaches which are closely related to diet, medicine practices, and uh, scientific research like phytochemical analysis and so on, can be adopted to explore the value of herbal preparations. And based on the experience from the random trials and observation in animals, uh, ancient people acquired the knowledge of using herbs for treating illness. So basically that plants were our medicine. Um, in this manner, uh, Chinese herbal medicine, Indian herbal medicine, which were highly developed in ancient time in China, Japan, Korea, India, are still influencing the modern healthcare. The World Health Organization, WHO, estimates that herbal medicines provide primary healthcare for approximately 3.5 to 4 billion people around the world. Like 50% of the population get benefited from these herbal medicines. It is very interesting that drug discovery from medicinal plants has played an important role in the treatment of cancer. I'm just taking one of the example. There are so many illnesses and but cancer is very, very interesting and very important disease. Indeed, most new clinical application of plant secondary metabolites and their derivatives over the last half century have been applied towards combating cancers. Numerous types of bioactive compounds have been isolated, including the alkaloids, Comerins, fatty acids, flavonoids, lignans, uh, terpenoids, and so on. Several of these compounds are currently undergoing further investigation, and today approximately 80% of antimicrobial, cardiovascular, immunosuppressive, and anti-cancer drugs are of plant origin. Some of these examples you can see in the picture, very famous medicine, aspirin, morphine, and also the, the Cocunon, there are so many medicines which have been extracted from the plants in direct or indirect way. Well, since 1919, there has been 22% increase in cancer incidence and mortality, with the four most frequent cancer being lung, breast, colorectal, 
and the stomach. And there are four more most deadly cancer being lung, stomach, liver, and colorectal, depending on the country and geographical locations. But this is like universal data. With the advent of how throughout how throughput screening assays direct towards uh, these targets, known compounds from medicinal plants may have shown promising and possibly selective activity. And this is what we are interested in normally. And uh, several known compounds have been isolated from traditionally used medicinal plants. 80% um, of the drugs which have been developed from the medicinal plants, 80% of these plants, they had a history of traditional use. Uh, so the drug discovery from medicinal plants has played a very important role in the treatment of cancer. And indeed, most new clinical application of plant uh, secondary metabolites and their derivatives over the last half century have been applied towards combating cancer. The area of cancer drug discovery has been challenging and medicinal plants has played a very important role. As we know that carcinogenesis is a multi-stage process by which a normal cell is transformed into a cancer cell. And this transformation implies a lot of different uh, steps and long process, typically from DNA damaging, um, during which cell proliferates, uh, proliferation is increased, progression, genetic alteration. So chemo prevention is another strategy which is new and uh, uh, research is going on. WHO has already declared a list of compounds or, or herbal products which can be used as chemo preventive um, agent. So this is another new area. Um, and uh, some of the data, which, which is quite interesting here, I'm putting India on the top, uh, being uh, one of the most diverse country uh, which more than 705,000 different plant species in traditional use, which is like half of the Indian native plant species. Then we have China. They have approximately 1,000 plant species are commonly used in, in Chinese medicine. And Africa, there are 5,000 plant species have been reported, but uh, due to lack of, uh, uh, due to lack of um, research or, uh, or the, the information, um, uh, most of the information have, have not been explored. And Mexico is, is uh, one of the fourth, uh, fourth mega diverse country in, in the world. And in Mexico, they have more than 6,000 medicinal plants in, in traditional use. And out of which 400 plants have been commercialized and 100 of them are cultivated. This is just the data to understand because my, my talk is about, um, about the, the necessity and, and current perspective of medicinal plant research. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, one of another interesting data that uh, uh, WHO, uh, not um, uh, since 18, for example, uh, 80s, WHO did not recognize the, the value of medicinal plants until unless they, they, there were some advancement in the, diag in, in the treatment of the diseases by different molecules which were extracted from plants. So finally, WHO, uh, uh, I think now they have four different monographs, if I'm not wrong, uh, and which comprise more than 20,000 different medicinal plant species, which considered uh, to be promising uh, for, for, to prevent and cure different kinds of diseases. So how drugs are developed from medicinal plants, right? Because uh, there are many ways that plants uh, provide different drugs. And there are many myths because many people think uh, that uh, medicinal plants are just, you know, using the, the parts of the plants. So there are phytomedicines, there are homeopathy, there are um, uh, combinatorial chemistry uh, coupled with the pharmaceutical. So there are so many things, you know, which, which, which can be done by plants. And this also creates a lot of complexity in the structure to be able to develop plant, uh, to be able to develop medicines from, from plants. Uh, initial success stories uh, in new drug discovery came from medicinal chemistry inventions, which led to the need of development of higher number of chemical libraries through combinatorial chemistry. This approach, however, was proven to be less effective in terms of overall success rate. The second source of uh, natural entities for sure are the compound from nature. Uh, before the advent of through high throughput screening in the post genomic era, more than 80% of drug substances were purely natural product or were inspired by the molecules derived from natural resources. 
what we call them semi-synthetic analogs. An analysis into the source of uh, new drugs from 1980 to very close to, to 2010 reveals that almost half of the drug approved since 1994 uh, by WHO are based on natural products. And during the year of 2005 to 2007, 13 natural products related drugs were approved by FDA. And there are various examples of development of new drugs from the plant sources nowadays. In general, there are six classes of source of natural uh, entities. And the four classes are botanical. We can put them fungi, bacteria, marine sources. And in addition to these four classes, modern pharmaceutical chemistry added two other categories of man-made substances like synthetic chemistry and combinatory chemistry of these uh, natural sources, botanical sources are the one we are discussing today. Uh, the botanical sources are known to provide the following classes of uh, uh, natural entities, which I already explained here. And uh, unlike synthetic drugs, uh, this is like a, a picture, the process how the drugs candidate are identified, then they go to trend clinical. The, the process looks very simple and few steps, but it can take decades. And that's the reality. So drugs derived from the herbal medicine are developed by isolation, identification, and then uh, standardization, and then the, 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 the trials, toxicological trials, pharmacological trials, uh, pharmacokinetics trials, drug delivery trials, uh, and finally the candidates were fully selected and they will go to the clinical trials depending on the extract, depending on the molecules, depending on the compositions. So, so, the, so the complexity is very high in all this process, okay? Uh, whether we know the plant from many, many years, hundreds and thousands years of use, but the development process and final product to the market may take many decades, which is the case, for example, in 2005, the, uh, one Chinese scientist uh, received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, uh, uh, a pharmacist, Du uh, Juju, and she got this prize for the development for anti-malarial drug after 35 years, okay? Anyways, so uh, uh, what we are seeing nowadays that um, a lot of people work with medicinal plants, a lot of people works. We have more than 60,000 plant species all around the world. 20,000 have been studied, but uh, very few drugs have been developed. And why? This is the reason. And this is the, this is the question and uh, the reason of this talk that nowadays uh, multidisciplinary approach should be employed strategically. And that's the only way by which we can develop drugs faster and quicker. Uh, one of the areas uh, which uh, is very promising in the field of uh, uh, medicinal plant research is the herbal genomics. A new terms, we don't have more than 10, 10 years with the, these technologies and, and uh, sequencing capacity of you know, the transcriptomes and the synthetic biology, uh, micro RNA analysis is still there, there, are, there is a long way to go, but there are many advancements which is uh, very, very important and promising. Uh, for example, in, in, this, um, uh, in this manner, I am putting like six different uh, steps, uh, six, six, six different uh, possibilities of herbal genomics. Uh, for example, with the developments of biotechnology and genomics uh, sequencing, uh, uh, whole genome sequence. Uh, um, uh, 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 units or capacity technology. Uh, several species like Ganoderma and Salvia, they have been recently, you know, uh, studies and whole genome have been published. And uh, a lot of, you know, uh, the uh, biosynthetic pathway had been declared for the first time, okay? Uh, the defining a molecular identity, for example, DNA barcoding is another very, very, very important tools. Uh, I will show you one real case where the DNA barcoding technique is very, very important to, you know, to, to identify the high quality and correct material to start your, your research. And uh, uh, in, the, in the part of molecular breeding, for example, the, the herb breedings is still a new area. Uh, most of the breeding programs have been focused on the food crops, not on the medicinal plants, but yes, this is the area where we need a lot of efforts. Um, uh, herbal, uh, the, the gene bank, you know, uh, 
the herbal genetic information have been you know uh, being accumulated with the increased speed in the last 15 to 20 years and uh, we have you know nowadays at least few platforms where you can find out some genetic information transcriptomic information dna barcoding database you know where you can at least find some of the information still this information is not is structuralized it does not have the proper structure there are so many gaps but it's still um, uh, i would say that it's a good advancement herbal synthetic biology you know synthetic biology uh, editing of genes and the genome it's a very promising area uh, some of the research have been doing done nowadays uh, the, the cannabis sativa have been studied you know um, in, in different countries uh, they have been trying to modify these these these, these compounds and some other plants, uh, for example, have been uh, mod modified genetically to produce valuable compounds and to understand the, the mechanism of action because most of the metabolism, biosynthetic pathway still are not clear. Uh, another term is geoherbalism. It's, it's another term when we are talking about a superior plant species in a particular geographical location right, understanding the, its uh, environment and for understanding the right conditions to, to grow this plant is also very important. Uh, most of the research nowadays, we are focusing in the pharmaceutical um, phytochemistry area. Most of the articles, most of the publication, but need to include, you know, omics technology and, and uh, genomic herbal technology and other technology will, I will also mention. Uh, for example, the, the, the omics I just mentioned, uh, now we are living in a post-genomic era, right? And, and the screening of herbal ingredients should be accelerated uh, due to the development of related disciplines in this post-genomic era, the pace of drug discovery from herbal medicine is like to, likely to be hastened and become more efficient than ever. Um, in this post-genomic era, by performing a comparative study on gene expression profile before and after taking the herbal extract, that is also a very interesting area. And even uh, some studies uh, we have recently seen, uh, very few articles have been published, but miRNA regulation uh, of, uh, before and after taking a herbal extract or a, a plant-based molecule, it's also a very promising area. Furthermore, genes responsible for regulating the pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of the drugs can be better understood. Uh, omics is a uh, cluster of techniques. It's a collective technology uh, which, which, where, which allow us to study different kinds of molecules. We can study carbohydrates, lipids, uh, secondary metabolites, proteins, genes, and genomes. Okay? So, but every approach is different. Their expertise is different. And uh, working with all these area, it's really complex thing. Okay? Uh, in this particular um, sense, for example, that um, uh, only few genomes have been published in, in plants. There are big projects about whole genome uh, plant uh, sequencing projects are being going on. One is in US, they call it uh, 1000 long genome. And another one is going in China uh, about uh, 100 medicinal plant species, and there is another one which they call 10,000 genomes. I don't know how many plants they are going to sequence, but these, these projects are, you know, at least they, they are going to create some platform because we have, we have too much to learn and too much to explore because plants are very, 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 very complex organism. Uh, um, well, thanks to these genomics technology, because this will obviously expand the herbal resources, what we have been discussing about. And while scientists are deciphering these genes in humans and the animals, uh, they can also do the uh, same on plants of interest, right? Uh, if, you, if you compare the genomes which have been, you know, investigated or developed in, in the field of mic microbes or microbiology or with animals or insect or arthropods, you will see there's a lot of information available, but when it's come to medicinal plants, the very, very uh, uh, little information is available. In China, for example, I already mentioned there are some very promising projects are going on in salvia. For example, the, the most of the genome have been uh, the salvia uh, uh, milky or visa uh, have been, you know, explored, published, and, and uh, a lot of work is going on to understand the 
the biosynthetic pathway or the French secondary metabolites of higher plants. Uh, metabolomics, uh, this is one of the very promising area which I personally um, uh, do and we, 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 we have a laboratory where we work the metabolomics of endemic Mexican plants. And this area, it's not old. We have like 10 years, 13 years when, when the metabolomics was uh, defined as a metabolomics where we use the different analytical method, GCMS, HPLC, and, um, MS. Uh, and so the techniques and NMR. So uh, collectively, these techniques can help us, you know, to understand uh, different kinds of molecules, characterize them, elucidate the structure, and and finally um, having the right uh, molecules or extract. Um, one of the another very important part. Of, uh, of this medicinal plant research is development of antiviral drugs, which uh, uh, you know nowadays we are we are having a pandemic. We are having a, 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 a COVID nineteen. You know the the situation of this pandemic, and uh, we know that we don't have enough molecules, antiviral molecules. There have been a lot of research and effort in antibacterial and fungi. The fungal molecules, but nowadays we are still fighting to have uh, potential antiviral molecules, and uh, this is not the case only just COVID-19. Viruses are, are viruses are difficult to treat, and uh, vaccine is the seems to be the the most you know uh, common or traditional way to treat virus nowadays. But uh, there must be some molecules which we can you know um, develop and treat different kinds of viral diseases. And there are so many diseases. We have still the hepatitis B, we have still the HIV, uh, we have so many other virus, which may be the, 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 the future or next pandemic, okay? So there are so many viruses out there, but uh, polio virus, for example, the vaccine took more than 55 years, HIV we know uh, since 35 years, so still we are working on it. We know the genomes, we know the proteomes and everything, still we cannot treat it. So, so we need more effort, strategic efforts where we can, you know, work with plants which have potential to to uh, to develop drugs against virus, right? Uh, nowadays, for example, the vehicle, the the mode of action, the 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 delivery system is also very very important because the delivery uh, uh, changes the capacity of the molecules absorption and its effect. Okay. So nowadays there are a lot, a big category of products have been, you know, developed, including nutraceutical, phytomedicines, uh, and uh, purified molecules, uh, synthetic molecules. They all must be optimized, you know, in terms of their concentration uh, to have their maximum benefits uh, from from its derivation, the concentration, the 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 uh, which can reduce the toxicity whatever it is you know so for example nanotechnology is is one of the one of the uh, potential uh, uh, technology which is allowing us to, to you know to, to to develop different kinds of delivery uh, therapeutical targets in different tissues and in, in, in trials also it's helping a lot uh, there are so many things which can be used uh, there could be polymers, biodegradable, natural or synthetic polymers, microcapsule, lysosome, lipoproteins, materials, there are so many other options, okay? This is one exam example of a Chinese medicine, for example, which have been uh, uh, tested for, for, for the influenza. Uh, and uh, you can see that they, they are using more than 15 different kinds of plant species to treat one, you know, one virus and still these, these medicines are not that efficient, right? So there is no other, you know, there is no other, you already know in Ay Ayurveda, uh, the news we have been seeing, the research we have been going, we, we are on again focusing on the plants which we know more than 500 years. And again, we are depending on the uh, immunomodulators and uh, other kinds of plants which in increase the immunity, but we don't, we don't have molecules which can kill the virus, right? So this is the one of the most potential area where the where most of research should be focused on strategically and beyond the boundaries, obviously. Uh, now I will talk about one real case where we have, you know, we have been facing a different kind of problems because we have a very promising plant species. We have been working uh, since many years with this plant species. 
but we have uh, several you know problems and uh, some of the problems which i i will mention today and uh, this is galfimia glauca uh, basically endemic mexican plants it, it grows in all over the all over the mexico through texas texas arizona and up to brazil so basically this plant is used to treat uh, nervous system disorder problem depression anxiety and and, and um, uh, for allergies and so on and this plant have been uh, uh, first reported in in the in in the beginning of uh, in 18th century uh, when the mexican revolutionary revolution was going on and the soldiers uh, uh, used to take the extract of this plant in the, you know the, the post war uh, syndromes or problems uh, so it was used as an anxiety uh, tranquilizer or a natural tranquilizer and since then this plant have been used in homeopathy in germany and then in germany they, you will find a lot of product in the field of homeopathy and uh, uh, some of the products have been developed in uk in europe and the plant have been spread all over the world in, in Japan, in China, you know, uh, it's very difficult to regulate the, the botanical material nowadays, but some regulation are going on. So this plant basically is from Mexico and uh, uh, we have been working on it in, 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 you know, try to understand the properties and pharmaceutical applications. Um, in this, in one study, uh, we have collected this plant from five different on. states. Uh, five different states, and uh, you can see the one, two, three, five. You know they are from different regions of Mexico. Mexico is, um, have, uh, I, if I, I'm not wrong, 20, uh, 29 different states, and uh, these collections, you know, uh, uh, were made. We we identify these plants. We submitted in the suitable herbarium. We got the voucher, all that, and morphologically, this plant is very, very similar. Extremely similar. And uh, by morphology, uh, it's very difficult to, you know, uh, make any conclusion. We, we, whatever we collected, we tag them as a Galfinia glauca. Uh, we got some confusion because uh, uh, we did some um, uh, chemical analysis, for example, and we have some markers, uh, which we, I don't know why I'm seeing these uh, lines over my presentation, but anyways. Uh, for example, this is the HPLC, and the, here you can see the two populations. Uh, one is from uh, Guanajuato, another one is from Querétaro, where I live. In, in, in these populations, you can see the five um, peak profile was the extract, methanolic extract, and these five peak profile is our marker. And these five peak profile represent the nine triterpene molecules which we have published in 2004. Uh, these molecules we reported 2004, then further we reported uh, in 2008 the, the work, and we had uh, identified and elucidated the structure and all that, and we knew that this compound is only represented in, in, in these two population, and these other five population, uh, they did not have a, 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 any of these peaks. And uh, the, the TLC, you know, the, the TLC, the Tinder chromatography method by which we could, you know, uh, we have a standardized method. We have this, again, the, the three bend profile in the case of triterpenes. And uh, this is a purified compound. And you can see that most of the, 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 the plates here, uh, basically only the, the, the QJ and the GM are the one which has the the Galfimia, Galfimines profile. Galfimines are the triterpenes which we, uh, which, which we have been reported. And in the other population, you won't find this. There are some same polarity compound, but finally we try to confirm this by NMR, where we have uh, purified, you know, compounds from the protons, uh, which are the the protons from uh, basically vanadic protons in the in the purified compounds and the, the gulfy mines they are a b c d e i f nine different compounds so here uh, we can see that only the the purified compounds uh, and the the population which i already explained gm and qj were the one who had these the signals which represent the triterpenes and finally, by in vivo models in rats, uh, the elevated cross model, we, we tested our hypothesis that if 
if the compound is not here, then we have to validate this 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 um, um, uh, properties in in rats. And finally, we we find out that yes, indeed, the the populations, uh, the QJ and the the GM were the only activate active active uh, populations. And here you can see the diazepam were used as the, the, the control. Other populations were not active. In this case, for example, the sedative test, when you uh, calculate the time of rat you know, sleeping, um, uh, again, the, the activity of these GM and QA were the significant other activities were not. So we made the conclusion by, by, by the in vivo and in vivo models that, that definitely the, the compounds we have reported uh, for sure they are present only in two populations. So why everybody in herbarium, for example, tagging this plant species as Calfimia glauca? So there must be some chemotypes, there must be some geographically inducer or aliceters, there must be some reason that only two populations producing these compounds which we, by multivariate analysis, you know, we, we, we take them as active populations, we identify the signals, and, and finally, so on. Uh, now we are working on the methodology, which, which UPLC nowadays, and okay. trying to uh, identify new molecules. Uh, but finally, when he, we had this problem, uh, we, we tried to do DNA barcoding to basically find out if there is any genetic variations in, in this in this in this in this plant species and finally surprisingly we could see that yes all seven populations they 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 they, they group in three different clades and the populations which have already sequenced by a chinese group in pubmed it does not represent sequence from from our uh, analysis and obviously the population of qj and gm genetically they are similar than these CT and MC, MT, MM group clad. Okay, so genetically we could identify there is a difference. Uh, another marker which we use RPC1 also tells us the same story. So finally, we identify that uh, this plant is not a single species. In this genus, we have more than 26 different species. And nowadays we resolve this mystery because so many products have been developed from this plant in China, in UK, in Japan, in Germany. And many people have collected the wrong material. So what they are selling, what they are developing, I don't know what kind of properties they are offering to the clients, but at least we know the by the help of the marker, by the help of metabolomics, that the real population, uh, it, it is in, in this particular reason. And these are the species and uh, it comprises at least 26 different species in this particular uh, Galphemia genus. So the moral of the story that uh, that uh, we have to work in many aspects. The, if we want to develop medicines, then we have to uh, work in different aspects of the plants. We have to do most of the things which we can perform. I know for a single laboratory or single uh, group, it's not possible, but uh, at least we, we should do in collaboration or whatever is possible for everyone. But we have started a multidisciplinary group of uh, medicinal plants where we are uh, trying to employ most of the techniques which we can offer uh, and afford uh, in terms of all the genomic analysis, miRNA analysis, and molecular docking. I have been recently collaborating with some of my colleagues in India. Micropropagation is another area, larger scale field production is another thing. Phytochemistry, obviously the most traditional, most widely used molecular biology and metabolomics. So, we are trying to work in all this aspect with this particular plant species. And just imagine, we need how many years and decades uh, to, to, to investigate this plant to be able to develop one drug or compound from this, okay? Uh, I don't know how, many, how much time I have uh, left. Anyways, uh, just quickly going to pass from this. Uh, for example, this is the phytomedicine which have been registered in last 15 years in Mexico. And you can see that these medicinal drugs, these phytomedicines, most of the, these drugs, they are from uh, export import business. Basically, they are from uh, some national companies and international companies, you already know that. And uh, uh, out of these 20, 20 200, uh, sorry, 223 different phytomedicines uh, registered and commercialized in Mexico, 
you can see they are just belonging to 45 most commercialized plant species. And we don't have any one single endemic Mexican plants here. So, so basically most of the phytomedicine research or phytomedicine product, they comes from Europe and, and uh, in Mexico, they commercialized by the license and by the patents and other things. But, but uh, there's a very lack of interest uh, in, 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 in this field. Uh, this is the plant, for example, the same plant I, I present you. It's, it grows in a very desertic conditions. You can see the, the conditions of the soil, the stones. And uh, so we did another project uh, just not to lose the control because the plant is, you know, extinguishing from uh, the, it's going to be in the end of your list by the national authority very soon because due to urban aviation and development and we are losing the, the its geographic relocation, it's very difficult to find this plant nowadays. So then we had to work with the micropropagation and other commercial, uh, sorry, traditional uh, uh, sexual or sexual reproduction methods. I'm not agronomist, but we had to do it because otherwise we, we were about to lose the plant. So finally, we, we, we achieved this uh, method. Now we are able to, you know, propagate plant because we are working with the large scale strandization of phytomedicine extractions, uh, phytomedicine extracts. So, we need uh, this plant in a very um, high amount. And that was not possible by traditional collection. So, so basically nowadays we have enough material, we are keep you know, improving the method by micropropagation. Then we try to develop a project, an integral project with rural development and with the, you know, the, uh, the, the academia. So we, we involved the, the senator, the senator of the, the another state. We got the John Deere, the Monsanto, the, the, the pioneer seed company directors of, the, the, of Mexico. We make a team together and we rented a place uh, and we involved the farmers. They used to cultivate uh, different you know, plants, but not medicinal plants. So we uh, put the, the Galfimia glauca you know, in the field. Uh, by using drip irrigation and the, the, the tunnels and all that, you know, agriculture applications to have wonderful, beautiful, healthy plants. And finally, the project was very successful. It was a pilot study. And nowadays uh, we are able to, uh, able to save this plant, conserve this plant, but we are also having a plant of very high quality. Nowadays, we are working on how to reduce, uh, um, how to induce the production of these triterpenes. This is one of the, the projects we are working with using different technology, right? Uh, light and other kind of elicitors. You can see that this project, you know, we, we grow Galfemia with many other uh, horticulture plant. For example, you can see leguse and uh, papaya and, and, and cucumber, maize, sunflower, um, uh, um, chilies, many uh, different kinds of, you know, vegetables and fruits were developed together with the medicinal plants. So the project was full success. We got all the support from the private companies. We did not invest, not a single uh, uh, dollar here. All were supported by the, by the community, by the people, by the companies and by the university. Uh, several papers we have published in different areas, right? And, but we are uh, still working on, on different aspects of this particular plant species you know, to counter the problems by multi-discipline approaches. Um, uh, so, okay, okay, so finally, well, we, we have uh, different challenges nowadays. Many of them I have already mentioned. Uh, in, in this uh, era of rapidly advancing science and technology, there is a tendency to ignore traditional value and knowledge, as well as traditional medicine as large, although uh, in this post-genomic era, uh, we have great opportunities for screening active compounds from medicinal plants, and uh, we should be aware of traditional knowledge in an attempt to discover drugs derived from herbal medicines, not just depending on the traditional use and traditional history and traditional belief. We have to prove it by scientific evidence, and many medicinal properties of plant species were revealed from experience accumulated from a long history of use in many traditional herbal therapies and cultures. And, um, Generally, the success rate of synthetic route for developing new medicine ag medicinal agent, it could be even one in 1,000 trials. And uh, however, the success rate with uh, such for new therapeutic moieties based on medicinal plant used in traditional medicine system uh, can be increased as, as, as a higher as uh, like one fourth or more. Um, uh, we have other, uh, we have to improve the techniques, technology, 
automatic automatization extraction methods we have to improve all that uh, another one of the biggest problem is the uh, active compound isolation the quantity uh, one of the reason of doing micropropagation is to have enough material because we did not have material and uh, this plant is very difficult to to localize it's very difficult to localize and very uh, rare location you will find this plant uh, the plant which produced the compound will find so many other varieties and species which, which, which are available in other states. But this particular uh, population is uh, the, the, the species is very difficult to, uh, to find. Anyways, uh, 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 I think I already passed my time. So, well, thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Uh, I'm um, ready for your questions. This is my email and uh, my Facebook and Twitter. Uh, and. Uh, uh, all yours, sir. Thank you very much for your attention, and uh, I'm ready for a question if you have any. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for your insightful knowledge, for a very informative information on medicinal plants, then medicinal plant discovery, then herbal genomics. So it is a huge knowledge that we have gained today. We thank you very much, sir. It is a privilege to have got to listen from you today. Thank you so much, sir. Now. Thank you very much. Now I request our participants to please uh, ask questions or any doubts through their chat box. You can write your questions in the chat box and you can ask, sir. Participants, uh, please uh, write your questions, your doubts in the chat box. It seems there is no question. <laughs> it's a Friday morning. People are waiting for the weekend, I guess. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yes, sir. We have one How question, we... sir. How we attribute nanotechnology to medical metabolites, sir? Okay. N nowadays, uh, well, there are several ways, but nowadays there is a, one important focus is about delivery system. How we can attach the, the molecule, the extract, the purified molecules to some uh, delivery vehicles. So th this is one of the most promising area. We have already working, uh, we have published the, the nano uh, particles uh, synthesis and the, you know, the, the characterization and the uh, in vitro test of uh, different kind of terpenes to attach uh, or, or, to, 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 be able, to be able to attach on some different kinds of nanoparticles. So basically nanotechnology is the synthesis and characterization of nanoparticles. And here uh, being people interested in medicine plants, we find, we try to, you know, find out new, new vehicles because in some plants or in some extract, you can increase the capacity property or you can inhibit the toxicity. So there are so, so many advantage of using nanoparticles. Uh, depending on the plant species, some, some plant species will respond, some will not respond. Uh, uh, and uh, basically, uh, in our case, in the case of uh, Galphemia, for example, we have uh, uh, tested by copper-based uh, 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 nanoparticles, for example, and we had some good properties, enhanced properties. So most of the research is going on in this way using nanotechnology with medicine plant. Thank you, sir. Any more questions, sir? Uh, sir, can you please help me to... Becca, sir, please help me to see the chat box. Thank you, Arun Ratibai. Uh, any participants, uh, if you are having any type of question, you can to raise your question. Oh, please go on. We still have time. Yes. Yes, sir. 
all participants rarely we get the opportunity to meet with resourceful person so kindly utilize your opportunity requesting it's to all participants one in the morning mexico 1 am yes, sir here it's uh, 11:40 am morning in india sir we have one question uh, the question is how flavonoids as secondary metabolites has more importance how flavonoid as secondary metabolite has more importance i want i will not say more importance because you know uh, there are many categories of secondary metabolites we have alkaloids we have terpenoids and we have flavonoids so basically uh, they have different properties i want i want say uh, they, that one is important than other one uh, basically uh, for example in my case uh, basically i am more interested in terpenes molecule terpenoids um but yes uh, in some cases for example flavonoids are uh, known for antioxidant capacity in in some plant species many compounds uh, antimicrobial compounds anti uh, um, antiviral compounds they are flavonoids so uh, it's very difficult to compare in 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 terms of their importance i would say all are important but we need to know more molecules because uh, if i'm not sure we have identified uh, close to 150000 flavonoids molecules so far and this list of molecules you know if you compare the the number of species we have on the land plant a number of species we have of the, the gymnosperm a number of species what we have in ocean or or or, or yes ocean ocean flora its number is so high so we need more efforts more technology and more research to identify more flavonoids more alkaloids and more terpenoids that 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 would be i think the the more reasonable yes, sir so we have one more question uh, what do you think about the future scope in medicinal plant sector in 10 years in india sorry ma'am uh, so the question is what do you think about the future scope in medicinal plant sectors in 10 years in india okay very interesting question uh, well in india or all over the world i think uh, the situation is very very similar uh being india for example india has one of the biggest pharmaceutical industry in the world uh, um but you know uh, again we have to do more research we need more research we cannot just you know rely on one plant which we know since 600 years and doing research and research and research and research by this way another way this dimension another dimension and as still we don't have any any complete or any conclusion right curcumin for example or turmeric you know a uh, catarmenic failed most of the clinical trials in 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 in, in terms of when uh, they were about to release the product it failed why uh, so we have to find out you know the 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 logic of doing research uh, with the focus of product development uh, i find lack of strategy and lack of scientific uh, a profoundness uh, when we are working in the medicine plant we believe still so much in the the traditional use and all the importance were given that this was used in in hundreds of years and this treat everything and many things are going like that way a big market have been created you know a big market have been created of herbal products everywhere i remember in mexico 10 years back in walmart i don't used to see herbal products nowadays there is a full section of hundreds of teas hundreds of natural extract hundreds of company so there is a boom there is there are company which are taking the advantage of this tendency of everyone who want to use the natural products but being natural doesn't means that it is not going to harm you or it does not mean that it's going to cure you without science without scientific profoundness without scientific evidence we cannot prove that this is going to work and you already know this is happening you know some people claim that i got the drug i got the medicine i got the capsule and in clinical trials they all fails 
they don't have enough evidence so we have a lot of marketing lot of selling things but we have little research so we need more accurate research we need multidisciplinary approaches like metabolomics like genomics like synthetic biology all together to be able to develop products right products which is really uh, benefitable and also provide us the right information about the complex biological information of plants plants cannot move they cannot speak right uh, they they looks very simple decent guys right but believe me they are the most complex organism of this planet every species is unique every plant is unique so to understand them we need to use new tools and technology and obviously we have so many tools nowadays so in 10 days what i will see that we have to focus hopefully the government or there will be some strategy that people should focus in new technology in the tendency not just selling the product just using the benefit of the traditional knowledge because we know there are traditional knowledge there are traditional histories behind many plants but these plants are clinically failed or they don't have any scientific evidence of their importance so when there is no scientific evidence i think we should not promote those plants right so in 10 years in every place maybe in europe india or mexico i think these multidisciplinary approaches um must be employed in a very strategic manner thank you sir uh, sir we have two more questions from our colleagues uh, future scope in herbal plants in northeastern region of our country future sorry future future scope in herbal plants yes sir in northeastern region future of scope. our country Uh, well it's a very very open question future scope in herbal plants you know uh, you know scope this this very famous word in india no scope of this scope of that you know everything they is evaluated in terms of scope i think scope is everywhere and in everything uh basically you have to find out the problem what is the problem you try to find out the right problem and then you will have a solution which is going to create a scope so so basically in north eastern region for example i see the climate uh, challenges or climate uh, favored conditions so being there i never been in in north eastern region but i know geographically that that there must be some challenging areas but there will be some some benefit uh, of these reasons so i think being youngster being pharmacist being biotechnologist you guys you know uh, try to look into it and find out some problems and and let's you know try to find out some solution entrepreneurship i always you know try to um, try to convince to all the youngsters that don't look for the scope try to create a scope right so scope is everywhere you know everybody gets sick right population is increasing so if you ask me about the scope about health i think this is the brightest scope right you cannot say there nobody is going to be sick after 10 years people will there will be more population there will be more challenges there will be more diseases so obviously scope is there but we have to grab right problem to create right scope yes sir thank you sir uh our next question is uh she's asking about the metabolomics research something about metabolomic research metabolomics is a good tool it's a collective it's a technology of collective techniques right where you can you know uh, helpful by different analytical techniques like hplc uh, gas chromatography coupled with mass spectroscopy or liquid chromatography liquid chromatography coupled with mass spectroscopy uh, nuclear magnetic resonance Uh, uh even now uh, you can also include the the supercritical extraction methods so there are so many techniques out there uh, uh, with the use of multivariate analysis a statistical tool and that they help you basically to try to identify new compounds 
by uh, try to separate or purify new compounds or old compounds. So basically, these these techniques, um, uh, collective techniques in metabolomics, uh, it it was referred in 2008 as metabolomics. Not you know in um, I completed my PhD in 2012, and when I started working in metabolomics, I remember in 2007 or 2008, if not remember, it was like published for the first time in, in, in one article that metabolomics are a new emerging tool, and they just collectively, you know, uh, started calling metabolomics. So metabolomics is a technology within the omics group where you have lipidomics, proteomics, genomics, transcriptomics. And every omics basically is to study one particular molecule. In metabolomics, you study metabolites. And metabolites basically, it could be anything. And most of the time, we, we consider this metabolomic as bioactive compounds, natural products, or secondary metabolites. So I don't think, uh, I, I'm not sure if I answered your question. But uh, if you have another question, you can ask. Thank you, sir, for, your, uh, for clearing their doubts. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, so we have one more question. I don't know if it is relevant or not. So how long does agrobacterium will present in plant after infection? <laughs> I don't know where, 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 where this question come from, but uh, I, I don't know basically about pathology. Uh, so basically, uh, I think I'm not the right person to answer this question how long it will get you know, present in the plants. Uh, what I know that uh, being a bacteria, it could be present uh, until unless the plant cannot kill it or defend it, right? Uh, but uh, the question, I don't know if it is about the real natural conditions, it is a lab or tissue culture. So uh, maybe I'm not the right one to answer this question. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for giving your valuable time. Thank you for this informative session and giving, giving us so much of knowledge about medicinal chemistry as a whole. Thank you so much, sir. Now, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now, I would like to request Mr. Sajidul Ansari Hawk, Assistant Professor, NEF College of Pharmacy, Guwahati, to kindly deliver his vote of thanks to Dr. Asitosh Sarma, sir. Sajidul, sir. Okay. Thank you, Arunduti, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Yes, yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So first of all, a, good, a very good morning to all, and I wish you all a very happy World Pharmacy Day. On behalf of NEF College of Pharmacy, Guwahati, and NEF College of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, Nogao, I feel honored and privileged to propose a vote of thanks to our honorable speaker, Dr. Ashutu Sharma, sir. I would like to extend a very heart, hearty vote of thanks to Dr. Ashutha Sarma sir for blessing us with your presence. I would like to thank you for your valuable speech and sharing and enlightening us with your knowledge, expertise, and findings. Your talk on medicinal plants research, past, present, and future was very informative, informative and knowledgeable. The way you have explained how a drug candidate from natural products and also about Sajidul sir, uh, you are uh, kindly unmute yourself. Sajidul sir, kindly unmute yourself. You are muted by. Over to you, ma'am. Yes, sir. Audible, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your time and for being with us. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, we break for lunch. With this, uh, we will have a break of one and a half hour. And I request all the participants to please be connected with us and join us again by 1.30 p.m. So, Dr. Asito Sarma sir has shared his email, then his Facebook and Twitter account to all of you, to all the participants. So, whatever queries and doubts you have, you can note down this information from him, and you can and you can uh, ask your questions, and you can connect to him through this.
thank you so much sir okay now we are having a break of one and half hour and participants i request you to please be connected to us by 120 sharply and we'll start the program by 130 pm thank you <laughs>